Hello, in this section of compound naming I want to talk about the stock system. And the stock system is just used with transition metals. And transition metals, remember, are going to be the D-block metals. And they're groups basically 3 through 12 on your chart. And when we're using the stock system naming, we're using, this is when your first metal or your first element is a metal and it's a transition metal or if it's lead or tin, and those are some exceptions that you would use with the stock system. When you're dealing with the stock system, you're going to have to use Roman numerals to identify which form of the element is being used. The reason they call these elements the transition metals is because transition means to change. And these particular elements can have more than one type of charge. So whereas when you're looking at oxygen, its charge is always negative 2, when you're looking at copper, copper can be a plus one or a plus two, so you have to distinguish which one you're dealing with. Now the naming of the stock system is similar to that of the binary. So in the first element, you're going to use the first element name unchanged. You're still going to do that, but then you're going to use some parentheses to figure out which form you're dealing with. And then you're going to change the ending of your second element to IDE. So it's very similar to the binary system, only you're going to have to identify which charge or which form of the of the element you're actually using as far as the transition metal. So in looking at an example, if you have Cu, Cl2, well what my suggestion would be is to go ahead and name this as if it was a binary compound and instead put the parentheses in there so you can use Roman numerals to tell the charge in between the copper and the, the chloride. And it would be chlorine, but I'm going to change the ending to IDE like I would with a regular binary. So this is copper something chloride. Now you have to go back and remember where those numbers actually came from. You know, we talked about earlier a process called swap and drop. So when you go back this compound actually began looking like that. So your copper had a plus two and your chlorine had a negative one and the negative one came from the charge on your periodic table. And so when you swapped and dropped, now you have Cu1, Cl2, and we know that you don't need that one there, so now you're left with CuCl2 which is how you get that copper whatever chloride. It's important that you understand that this 2, if you work backwards, that 2 originally came from the charge for copper. So that means that you're dealing with copper 2 chloride. You have to work backwards on these. So if you're looking at Fe2O3, well, this is going to be some form of iron oxide. So it's going to be iron something oxide. And we look at our numbers, and we're going to move them backwards. We're going to kind of reverse swap and drop. That 3 originally came from iron, so it's going to be iron 3 oxide, which is also called rust in just common terms. Then we have what I call ugly iron, which is FEO, or FEO. And this is going to be iron something oxide as well. Now the most common mistake on this is going to be that it's going to be iron 1 oxide. But that's not the case. It can't be iron 1 oxide. And here's why. Even though we don't know the charge on, on iron, we do know the charge on oxygen. And when you look on your chart, the charge on oxygen is negative 2. So, in forming this compound, and we swap and drop, what that's going to be is if it were iron, if it were iron one oxide, your compound would look like that, and it can't happen. So instead, the only way that it can look like FeO or FeO is that means that this iron has to be a plus two, and when it's swapped and dropped, it's Fe2O2, 
and it reduces to FeO. So that means that FeO is actually iron 2 oxide. So you're going to have to use some deductive reasoning and some logic in doing this, but it helps to be able to mentally go back and reverse swap and drop to identify your charges. So in a short recap, treat it like it's a binary. Start the, naming the compound as if it were a binary. Leave space for your parentheses. Do your reverse swap and drop. Get your charge. Place it inside the parentheses, and then you're done. I hope this was helpful. Thanks.